Something I firmly believe in is that everything starts with your mindset, everything starts with your mentality in football and in life. If you don't have an edge, you can't compete at the highest level, period. Go do something else. We have everything in this room to achieve what we want to achieve. It's time for another Dallas Cowboys season and time for another season of the Jason Garrett Show, powered by Reliant Energy. Bill Jones alongside Cowboys head coach Jason Garrett inside the Academy Sports and Outdoors studios here at the Star in Frisco as we get you set for the Cowboys and the Carolina Panthers. It's a 325 kickoff in Charlotte on Sunday, and I bet everybody is just chomping at the bit to get the, this real thing going on Sunday. You know, I think that's a perfect description, chomping at the bit. You know, we've, we've had a really good uh, offseason. The players have worked hard to lay the foundation both in the offseason program and training camp, but there's nothing like the start of the regular season. So good practices this week. Excited about this opportunity against the Panthers. And we got a little bit of a glimpse during the preseason of what this team might be all about, but we didn't see Ezekiel Elliott in the preseason. I, when you're talking about players who are chomping at the bit, I would think Zeke would be at the top of the list. Yeah, no question. Mm -hmm. Zeke's had a great offseason and a great training camp. We just thought it was best to keep him out of the preseason games. You know, even a couple of years ago, we only played, you know, one or two series uh, as a rookie. So, you know, the guys who get the ball so much during the season, you want to minimize the pounding they take uh, in the preseason. But he's practiced well. I think mentally he's ready. Physically he re he's ready. Uh, it'll be exciting to see him out there against the Panthers. A growing trend in the NFL has been to rest the starters or not risk injury to the starters uh, during the preseason. We haven't seen that first unit out there in, in a couple of weeks now. As far as getting on the same page, for Dak Prescott with a new set of receivers uh, doing it in practice I think is is uh, is sufficient yeah you know one of the challenges is the new guys you know whether we drafted them like Michael Gallup or, or we, they came from other teams Tavon or Deontay or Alan Hearns you know just time on task obviously he's played a lot of football with Cole Beasley and Terrence Williams uh, but you want to see those guys out on the practice field together. Uh, you know, Deontay was injured for a lot of training camps, so they don't have that much practice time together. But he's worked a lot with the other guys. And, uh, you know, they've done a great job just finding time and opportunity and, and communicating so they can get on the same page. And uh, we're always a work in progress. They've worked very hard to get to this point. Again, we're excited to see those guys play. Youngest team in the league. Just two players have celebrated their 30th birthday. Sean Lee and L.P. Lattice are the long snapper. As you approach a season opener like this with a young team, anything that you do different with young players to make sure that they are at their best come Sunday? Well, you know, we're fortunate that we have a lot of young players who have been with us who are really good players. You know, you mentioned Zeke Elliott, Dak Prescott, you know, the guys on our offensive line. You think about Tyron and, and, and Zach Martin. Those guys have been really, really good players for us, and they're still not that old. And, and similarly on defense, when you talk about Demarcus Lawrence and you know, even Tyrone Crawford, some of the guys who have been around here who are still very much in their 20s. Uh, so those guys set the pace for everybody else. But we do have some new players. We have some rookies who'll be playing. We'll have some second-year players who are playing. Uh, the thing we try to do more than anything else is prepare them as best we can in practice and try to help them carry that practice work into the game. They played a lot of football in their life. They just have to make sure we go about it the right way in terms of our approach. And when it's time to cut it loose, go get it. Uh, you look at the reviews from the Oxnard portion of training camp and preseason games. The defense looks to be in, in we look to be in regular season form back there. One of the ways that I think you can look at this defense, it seems like a group that will fly to the football. No question, and, that, and that's really what we want to be. I mean, that's line one. We're an effort-based defense. We're physical. We'll sprint to the ball. Uh, we're going to 11 hats to every tackle. Uh, hopefully we're going to be a team that takes the ball away. All those things are part of the, the mantra that we have uh, on our defense. Rod Marinelli preaches it every day. Chris Richard coming in. We all believe in the same thing. So uh, as you keep building the talent of the defense, maybe you see that more and more and more. But that's the DNA of the team. We want it to jump off the tape. And uh, I think we saw glimpses of that in the preseason. We've got to carry that into the regular season. All right. A little bit later here on the Jason Garrett Show, we'll dive into these Carolina Panthers and some of the matchups you can expect on Sunday. But up next, it's David Moore, the Dallas Morning News. The Jason Garrett Show, presented by Reliant, is brought to you by AT&T. More for your thing, that's our thing, Ford. 
Ford is the best in Texas. The University of North Texas, proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. And by Reliant, an NRG company. This segment is brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. And welcome back to the Jason Garrett Show, powered by Reliant Energy. Bill Jones now joined by David Moore of the Dallas Morning News. You can find his fine work at sportsdaydfw.com. Welcome back, David. Good to be back. First question, are you more shocked that Dan Bailey got cut or that you didn't get cut from the Jason Garrett Show? <laughs> well, it was, it was nip and tuck since I... Since I had no clue that Dan Bailey was going to get cut, and I'm constantly surprised I'm invited back. Each week. I would say I'm actually a bigger surprise than this one. <laughs> All right, uh, as far as this team is concerned, what is the uh, biggest concern Cowboys fans should have about this team? I don't, I don't know why. I mean, you, you always put health, so I think that, that goes for every team. All right, so let's throw out a cop out. So All let's right. throw that out. Yeah. Um, I, I know they're counting on the fact that in the passing game, versatility and being able to attack defenses in different ways is going to make it difficult for defensive coordinators to get a bead on exactly what they do. And it'll be harder for them to get tendencies and guys will come out of different positions than they have before. All of that can be a positive, but until you have proven it, I think it's a question mark. All right, so what kind of expectations should, uh, should the Cowboys fans have for this team this year? Well, I think they should be high. I know a lot of times when, whenever you look at a team you, you, in a particular market, a lot of times I think people tend to focus on their warts and give them more weight than all of the positives that they have going. Uh, I don't think last year was as bad as the perception is. I, I think nine and seven record. Dave. I think there was a three-game stretch where they were non-competitive, which influenced the people's emotional and that was without response. Without Zeke Elliott. Yeah, and let's get to Zeke Elliott for a moment. This team with Ezekiel Elliott, when he plays, is 19 and six over the last two years. When he doesn't play, they're three and four. I, I recognize the questions surrounding this team, and they're valid, but I don't think people should underestimate how good Ezekiel Elliott is, how accomplished Dak Prescott is as a third-year quarterback, uh, how good this offensive line is. That being said, losing Travis Frederick early in the season is a huge blow. Connor Williams, I think, is a good addition, but what are defenses going to do? They're going to attack Connor Williams and Joe Looney in the middle of that line with pressure to see how they hold up because the line is only as strong as its weakest link. So that, that's, you mentioned another concern. I don't know if it's a concern, but it's certainly something that bears watching early in the year. And especially this week against Carolina where they've got Juan Short and Don Terry Poe who are going to line up over those uh, two guys in the middle. David Moore, I think you probably made the cut for next One week One more week. As well. It all is right. a week-to-week -week basis around here. <laughs> we're I all understand on, that. We're all on a week-to-week <laughs> -week basis, though. Our thanks to David Moore. And when the Jason Garrett Show continues in a moment, it's one of the captains of this team, Zach Martin. This segment was brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. Welcome back to the Jason Garrett Show, powered by Reliant Energy. Bill Jones inside the Academy Sports and Outdoor Studios here at the Star in Frisco. We head down the hallway here into Ford Center, where Lindsey Draper is standing by with one of the captains for this year's team. Thank you so much, Bill. I am with Zach Martin, who obviously, gosh, where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Yeah. Uh, out in some hot practices this week, but it is week one. It's yep. exciting. Finally getting ready for a real game. What yep. was, let's go back. What was this off season about for you, bringing you to this point now? Yeah, you know, it was a good off season, a lot of hard work. Um, you know, we were a very close team and, you know, the off season spent, you know, growing those relationships as a team and then in a training camp, getting those good reps and just coming closer. And, um, you know, we're just really excited for the season. And Congratulations on becoming a team captain. That's Thank very you. exciting. Yep. And the average age of this team is about 25 years old. Right. So not only is all of that new, but now you've really been elevated into a right. role that um, leads this team. What does all that mean? Yeah, no, it's a fun team to be a part of. You know, we're, we're young, but, um, you know, we have a lot of, we have guys with a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's awesome being with a bunch of young guys. They're, they come every day very motivated uh, with a lot of energy, and it really, it really pushes the group up. So. Um, it's a really fun team to be a part of. 
you know better than all of us, Ezekiel Elliott, Joe Looney, Dak Prescott, the changes that have happened, but you you feel like that they're going to be absolutely ready. Oh, absolutely. I think I've um, uh, mentioned this week that, that Joe's done a great job over the last few years really picking Travis's ear and our brain and, um, you know, doing exactly what he does. So, um, you know, obviously you're not going to replace a guy like Travis Frederick, but, uh, you know, Joe's doing a really, really good job uh, of, of doing exactly what, what Travis kind of taught him. And you mentioned earlier this week that this team, this offense, wants to get back to running the ball like they did a couple years ago. How exactly do you make that happen? Well, I think you got to execute first and foremost. Um, you know, we, we've had we have experience with each other on the line. You know, obviously Connor's new, but he, he's gelled kind of from the start. So, um, you know, it's really a lot on us executing and, and getting Zeke some holes so he can make us make us look good. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about Carolina. Yep. Week one, obviously they've got a they've been working on that defensive front. What mm -hmm. has that kind of been like game planning for them? Yeah, you know they're really, really talented up front. Um, you know, got a lot, a lot of experience there with Short and and Poe. And then obviously, uh, you know, Keekley in the middle is kind of like their Sean Lee and um, makes a ton of plays. So we're going to have a workout cut out for us, but, uh, you know, it's a great way to start the season uh, in Carolina against a great football team. Okay, so you have said, and I just, if anyone's watching the show, I want them to hear it straight from you. You feel healthy, you feel ready to go? Yep, yep, feel great. 100%. 100%. Right yep. there, you heard it from Zach Martin. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. You Thank may you. go shower now. Thank Phil, you. Phil, back to you. All right, thanks, Lindsay and Zach. And up next here on the Jason Garrett Show, the head coach returns. Plus, we break out the Telestrator with Will McClay. Welcome back to the Jason Garrett Show. Bill Jones now joined by Will McClay as we got the Telestrator out. We're going to break down this Carolina offense, starting with Cam Newton. Yeah, an explosive offense. So we're going to take a look at Cam Newton. He's a quarterback that makes the defense count for 11 players. A lot of guys that don't, especially in the run game. But here you'll see it set up. Offensively, they got one defense at one, two, three, four, five, six guys. This guy is going toward the middle of the field. So they have numbers over here. Now on this side, you got one, two, three, four. You got one, two, three, four to account for those guys. Then you have the back. So everybody's accounted for. What they're doing is the quarterback and the safety are going to be one on one. Run action. You'll see it here. They're going to double team, slide down, fake it. He's got the back. You got to have your pitch options, and now it's the quarterback on the safety. And he, he will make a guy miss. He will like make he a guy there. miss. We have to be disciplined in our run fits up front. And of course, Carolina also has a tight end who's been to the Pro Bowl multiple times, the veteran Greg Olson. Yes, big part of this offense. They missed him because of injury last year. But what happens is he's the quarterback security blanket. He's got he's six five. He runs a four five four six. He's a matchup problem. They're going to see one on one again. They're going to see one on one coverage. Looks like they're going to bring pressure. Now the safety's leaning over here. Sees the safety over there. Uh, Olson's going to run a route into space, and you're going to get a throw from the quarterback to exploit that. We'll see it right here. And Cam's not a great accurate thrower but what happens is you give him those clean looks and guys to catch the ball he's throwing a dart in the middle of the field with space again a big play for them and what we have to do is limit those big plays and Greg Olson an athletic tied in Will McClay we appreciate it let's hear from Carolina head coach Ron Rivera and they got a lot of young guys new faces at different positions um, but I will say this in 2015 we had a bunch of new faces too so I, again I, I think what you've got to do is you've, you've got to try to figure it out very quickly and make sure you're making adjustments to, to, to handle it. I mean, I know what we have going in. Um, you know, my question will be how will we adjust if certain things start to happen? And we welcome the head coach back to the Jason Garrett Show, powered by Reliant Energy, as we take a look at these uh, Carolina Panthers and uh, some changes on their coaching staff as well, as your old friend Norv Turner is now the offensive coordinator of the Panthers. Yeah, you know, Norv has been such a great coach in this league for a long time, was the coordinator for those Super Bowl teams in the early 90s with us. That's when I first met him, and he's been uh, certainly a great friend to me, a mentor to me. And, you know, if you look at his career and the different stops he's made, you know, the guys who, who play for him typically play some have some of their best years under his tutelage. And, uh, you know, uh, it'll be interesting to see what he does with Cam Newton and with McCaffrey, a couple of the weapons the Carolina Panthers have. But uh, enormous respect for Norv. He's been a great coach for a long time. Yeah, being the first game, you have no track record on exactly what effect he's going to have on Cam Newton. But in general, when you're facing a quarterback like Cam Newton, what is it that you have to watch out for? Well, you have to watch out for a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, he's, he's someone who is big, he's strong, he's athletic. 
Uh, he's got a great stature when he's in the pocket. He's got a strong arm, can throw it anywhere. Uh, I think the thing that separates him is the ability to run on top of that. You know, he's a threat throwing the ball, but he's a threat running the ball on design runs, but also when the play breaks down. And, and, and he beats you w with his feet, running for first downs and making big plays, but also getting out of the pocket and throwing the ball down the field. So he's an outstanding player. He certainly is the key player for their offense and has been for a long, long time. What kind of a stress does uh, Chris McCa Christian McCaffrey put on a defense? Yeah, uh, 80 catches last year yeah, in the backfield. Yeah, again, a really good player. And sometimes people think that he's just a receiver out of the backfield. He's not. Uh, you know, he's over 200 pounds. You see him run the ball inside. You see him run the ball outside. You see him run routes out of the backfield. They line him up as a receiver and he runs routes. So they're clearly trying to get the ball in his hands. And it's easy to see why. He's been very productive for him. How about uh, what's going on at your safety position? Of course, Jeff Heath has been playing very well and played well the last couple of seasons. Xavier Woods dealing with an injury. And you got to match up against a Pro Bowl type tight end in Greg Olson. Yeah, again, uh, Olson adds to the to the to the weapons that they have and he's been a really good player for a long time and you know our safeties and our linebackers you know we have to be on top of that matchup because he can threaten you down the field in the seams you know we anticipate Kayvon Frazier being healthy and playing a lot for us this week but that'll be one of the challenges they present to us. Flip it over to the other side and one of the strengths of this Carolina defense is the front seven. You got a five time pro bowler in Luke Keekley at middle linebacker K1 short and a new acquisition this year. Dante Don Terry Poe will challenge the middle of your offensive line I guess. Yeah uh, they're really good inside big strong athletic guys. You mentioned Poe and short uh, they're outstanding and they play really well together disruptive against the run. They affect the quarterback. Obviously their ends are really good. Julius Peppers is still there and playing well in year 17. You mentioned him right at the outset. Luke Keekley, maybe as good a defensive player as there is in the league. He's so active, makes so many plays in the running game, always tipping balls in the air, intercepting passes, tremendous instincts, a great playmaker for him and a great leader for him. Third uh, in rush defense in the league last year was Carolina, and they were also third in sacks with 50 on the season. Kind of strength against strength there when the Cowboys' run offense goes up against Carolina's run defense. We're going to have more with the head coach when the Jason Garrett Show continues in a moment. Final couple minutes here of the Jason Garrett Show, powered by Reliant Energy, and we have usually reserved this last segment for the unsung star. And I've got an unsung star from the final preseason game. That would be Brett Maher. When I was doing the game, I said, wow, he kicks a 57-yard field goal. He's impressing other teams around the league. Little did I know how much he impressed his own team. Tell us a little bit about the new kicker, Brett Maher. You know, Brett's done a great job for us, and, uh, you know, we know him before. He was in training camp with us in 2013, but very good kicker at Nebraska, success in the Canadian Football League. And, you know, one of the things that was interesting uh, to us about him is that he can, you know, place kick, field goals and PATs, kick off, and then also he punted. So, you know, he was attractive to us as we signed him in the offseason, and he just was very impressive really each and every day in terms of his approach, how he went about it, very professional, understands how to, how to, how to get his work done and, 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 and be a productive kicker on the practice field. And then he, he made all his kicks. He made them all throughout training camp, great opportunities in, in the preseason he took advantage of, made the long kick against Houston. So just did a lot of really good things for us. So we're excited to have him. Obviously, Dan Bailey's been one of the great players in this organization over the last seven, eight years. Uh, and that was a difficult move for us. But we're excited about what Brett can do as we go forward. And another unsung star from last season was the punter Chris Jones. This team had the lowest punt return yardage yielded last year, the lowest in 10 years in the league, second lowest in a team history. That's not just the punter's job, but special teams will be a key against Carolina too. No question. You know, it starts with protection. Our guys have done a really good job up front. So, so that's where it all begins. But then you just want to give Chris Jones a chance to operate. And uh, he does such a good job kicking the ball high and deep when he needs to, uh, high and short when he needs to. He's got great uh, touch and accuracy uh, when we're in the red zone. And you said it, he limits the returns. And, you know, Flyers need to show up big in this game. Our cover team needs to show up big. But we've got to keep giving Chris opportunities. He really does change the game because the way he changes field position. And Chris Jones named one of the five captains for this season, along with Dak Prescott, Zach Martin, Sean Lee, and Tyrone Crawford. Good luck in Carolina on Sunday, Jason. We appreciate it. Thank you, Bill. And we appreciate you joining us here for the first edition of the Jason Garrett Show, powered by Reliance. Energy. The Jason Garrett Show, presented by Reliant, was brought to you by Ford. Ford is the best in Texas. Bank of America, 
the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full access to coaches' film and game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Subscribe at DallasCowboys.com slash Game Pass. All right, very good. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right.